Hey everyone, Ivy League Gaming here, and today we're playing Dragonair's Silent Gods. For today's video, I'm going to go through and give some tips and tricks for the Fey Meander. So this video is going to be based on Season 2 for some of the comments regarding the bosses, but the tips and the advice overall are going to be kind of general. It's not about exactly what heroes I'm using. It's not about the legendaries. It's not about what what artifacts I'm using. It's about gear. It is about gear. We'll talk about that. And it is about strategy. And I'm going to kind of talk through some of my best tips and tricks for completing Famiander Season 1 and Season 2. But before I get into that footage from my live stream... I want to mention that that live stream and this video is sponsored by Dragon or Silent Gods. And well, we are on season two, brand new season, span new game, having some fun with a new boss that was added to Fey Meander. And I also pushed and hell, we got a new character as well. So lots of new stuff in the new season, new synergies, new elemental alignments. It's kind of fun, new um, area to explore. And yeah, I'm really enjoying the the different changes to stuff like this um but still the familiarity of it we still have lady of greeneries pop up here for example as well as the new boss so it mixes in a little bit of both yeah we're gonna progress and talk about tips that help everybody these tips should help you whether you are brand new to fey meander or if you're pushing the end game hard hard levels so let me roll that footage all right, so Fey Meander. Let's talk Fey Meander. All right, so Fey Meander. I figured as I go into it, I would give some tips and tricks overall. Um, not regarding my roster, just regarding in general. I feel like that could help some people here. I think what I, one of my biggest tips from the beginning that I'm trying to follow myself, which I'm already a little bit behind on, but we're going to push today, is don't let yourself get so behind. Like last season, I waited until the very end to push like the whole thing. And some of the stages, I mean, they're hard. And not many people really finished the whole thing last season. 180. Whew. So many people, like, for getting stuck in, like, the 150s, the 140s, and even before that. Like, Kraken-looking accounts. So it takes a lot longer to do some of the battles than you expect. And I think trying to do a little bit as you go along in batches, at least is something I really want to encourage people this season because I found out how much harder it was, you know, to try to k play catch up. I, I like the idea of saving some content for the end because once you get to the Resurgent Dragon, there's nothing left to do in the game, literally, except your dailies, which give you nothing to help you for the next season, except a, a couple Wormaro and Starlight. So, like, if you save a little bit to do, sure. But I, re I really regret waiting until the last minute for doing all of my Fey Meander. I really regret that. Labyrinth of Curiosities is also kind of fun because you don't have to do them in order. You can just do them whenever you want to do them. So like you're like, okay, I, all this stuff is important to me. Let me do them all now. But if you get to the end of the season and you're like, I'm not farming any more gear. You can just skip this one. You don't have to do it. Like that's kind of the like good part. You can just pick and choose which ones you want to do. Where Fey Meander, you have to get through a level to get on to the next level. But you don't need to do that with Labyrinth of Curiosities. It's so like, I didn't do a single Labyrinth of Curiosities last season. And so all I did was find the ones like this. I grabbed the Worm Morrow, I grabbed the Scrolls, I grabbed the Dice, and that was it. Because I had a maxed out Psychic Core. I, this doesn't transfer this to next season if it's from like this type of thing. And I didn't need any more gear, so I just ignored most of them and only did the ones for the items that transfer from season to season. But I regret that because if I had done it now, in the beginning, where it actually matters, all of this stuff is very valuable. So don't procrastinate too much. <laughs> so when it comes to the actual people, obviously I'm using my OP people because why not? I want to blast through. But it doesn't, it's not necessary, you know? Like, Voresh in a stun set. Anyone that does AoE damage in a stun set. The Holy Hunter set, that's one of the biggest helps, I think, 
score pushing Faye Meander. All these waves just crowd controlling. Really, really good. So people that have crowd control, you guys should definitely make sure you keep on alert for pushing Faye. Including our guy we got last season, like Goom, Goom Gum as I call him. He has all this crowd control here with three attacks with a stun. Blind attack penalty. He's really good for pushing Faye Meander as well. Plus there's the um, other one we get from Faye, Galid. The little goblin this season, another goblin. Uh, I think he's a goblin. He's also going to be great for pushing the rest of Faye. So having people that do crowd control and AoE is probably the best tip, I would say, for who you're choosing. Yola, another one. Uh, she brings silence and attack penalty, and she can do a little bit of damage. People that hit multiple times, like Yola, like Goom Gum, like Vorash, are also great for Witch's Remains or the Crown of Unclean. So these are going to be your people that help the most. And then having a tank that has multi-function, you know, like Gar uh, my Garius is in a gatekeeper staff, so he also provides shields. But if he didn't provide shields, I don't think I'd be using him. I'd probably be using something else. Of course, this season synergy affects my decisions, but like you really want multi-function. You want healing, you want attack penalty, you want crowd control, you want something else, not just a one thing, right? So a poor Garius here could use a could use an artifact or two. There we go, or a rune or two. I even last season, because it's so early this season, I don't have options. But last season I actually put a holy hunter set on multiple people. Um once you get later on and you have lots of options for gear, putting anyone that has a good AoE ultimate or whatever in Holy Hunter doesn't hurt. It's like, it's kind of the, the trick to... The whole team's in a dang stun set, I think, by the end. A lot of people did that for the really high stages as well, so... Gear's definitely important, but it's not about the shiny legendaries. It's about just using people that make sense. Um, of course, there's a lot of fun new legendaries as well. Sigrid is still gonna be OP. Sigrid is just... Sigrid plus Vorash is always gonna be good. Sigrid in a team with Frost is going to be good because there's tons of um, debuffs going on. Or Burn, you know, like Thunderbolt in her case, I guess, will be good. Electrocuted is a debuff. So having Sigrid in a team with a lot of debuffs is going to be huge. That's going to be still an MVP for pushing because of when she, of course, well, her ultimate here. But just a reminder, debuffs are the ones in red, and control effects are the ones in purple. So, like, a stun doesn't count for helping Sigrid's ultimate. Or a stun set, like the Holy Hunter, controlling everybody that does not count for Sigrid's ultimate. But she's still OP. <laughs> I feel like in the beginning, I try to smash as much as possible with all DPS plus, like, one healer. And then later on, I start to take out DPS and put in more supports or try to have supports that have a little bit of a multi-function with a heal like she has she'll be able to heal around the melee units mostly probably um, or whoever because it's random she's gonna be pretty solid for pushing Faye I think and she's gonna bring a little bit of damage too but I always make sure I have someone in Witch's Remains or the Crown of Unclean and then I always try to have someone in a Holy Hunter set at least one but as I progress, I'm definitely going to get more. Um, definitely going to get more. I think in this, I think this season too, the burn people are going to be fun. Like if you guys got lucky and you got a Carf, he's going to be pretty fun because he hits multiple times and then does the burn. You give him accuracy. He could also be in a Holy Hunter set stunning. I put Carf in a stun set, the same set that I have Voresh in. I put him in that for trying to push Pillar of Trial. Like the stuns really come in handy for this. That's kind of the biggest tips, I think, with formation. And just trying to smash your way through early as much as possible, then slowly take out a DPS and add support as needed. But there's a lot of amazing people that are super underrated. Like Ripikos as a tank doesn't get a lot of love, but he's amazing for Pillar of Trial and Famiander. Someone like that is just so good that brings a lot of control and debuffs and is a great tank just overall yeah he's really good 
Vitar, oh, you're lucky. That's that's very good. See, we don't all have Vitar. She's the queen bee of Frost. Nagook is a really good shout. I like that car. It's really smart. So there's so many good heroes in Poison and Lightning. And if you go Sigrid, we know you're good. If you go Thunderbolt, you know you've got some AoE. And then he's he's just a tank. But that stun in this whole board static field. And then stunning when people are taking damage from the static field. Yeah, I remember him, but he's one I haven't used yet at all. But maybe I will have to break him out this season. That's a good shout. All right, we have a boss stage, so let's roll on into the boss. So this boss is a lot like um, Lady of Greeneries, and she does show up too. We have Lady of Greeneries and the Fungal Spider Mother. And it's kind of obvious, they're just... There's a lot of debuffs, there's a lot of control, they both do that kind of a thing. So having people with resistance can be needed sometimes, or dispelling debuffs, or dispelling control effects, or preventing debuff, debuff immunity, or control immunity is really going to be useful against these bosses. Of course you can try to just overpower it like I'm going to do right now, I'm going to see, can I just smash my way through this level, if not... I'm going to need to bring in a cleanser for all these debuffs, although that one you can't cleanse. But the Lady of Greeneries one you can cleanse. But this one you cannot. Some of these have like the border around, like you can see the fungal thing. You can't cleanse it, but you can prevent the stacks. Like I actually had um, some high resistance on people, and those people with the high resistance didn't get the stacks in the first place as high. But it it's luckily... Oh, I already got a... So, got a... No, those stacks are getting really high. But obviously not as easy in all the higher stages. But that boss is... Yeah, the, the boss has a lot going on. So if you can prevent it in the first place, I think you can prevent with control immunity. I actually haven't tried. I realize I'm going to have to bring in Malak next time and try to make sure that is the case. That's right, with this spider, you don't want to let the spiderlings stay alive very long. Gotta kill the spiderlings that pop up. That's the other thing. I knew there was more to this. Than just crowd control and weird poison stuff. Being sure to kill the spiderlings, which yeah, may mean you need to manually attack them. By turning off your ultimate and selecting the area. Alright, we're popping around the world here though. Sometimes, like, you don't have to fight every single boss, or sorry, every every single enemy, which is really interesting. Some of the stages have like a side boss or side enemy fight that'll just pop to one area and you don't have to do it in order to progress. So if you get really stuck on one fight, but you can progress to the next stage, it's okay to skip stages. You can always make note to go back later and try to do it. But that was something that I felt later on in the stages. Um, there was like one really hard battle with like Grishnar and someone else. And with that, I remember just not being able to do it. So like, I think I, I wrote down somewhere, okay, stage whatever, go back to it, maybe. I never did, but at least it didn't make me stuck. Some of the battles are optional. Just like the chest, you can accidentally forget to grab some of the chests. Where like, like the ones that are brown instead of the gold chest. You can accidentally forget those. Don't want to do that. But yeah, here's a good example. Like, let's say I tried to do this Gulen battle and I failed. I could just go on to the next stage and not do it. And then go back to it later. But let's take a look at what that looks like. I know Karshu mentioned. It does show it pretty clearly. So... Oh yeah, so you can tell. Like, in these ones, stage cleared. You can't go back and do it again, right? But in this one, I have three out of four for my battle- for my fights, two out of two for my chest, so you can go back and enter. So it is pretty obvious, like, if you did forget something, it's not too big of a deal. Or if you purposefully want to skip something to get ahead to a different reward, or you're just struggling with one, you can go back and do it later. It makes it pretty easy to go back and do it later. 
And there she is, Lady of Greenery is back for season two. Hey. Love the graphics, so cool. So I think she's exactly the same. I don't think they changed her. They just added in the other boss. So obviously she's all poisons, poisons, and controlled. But but they're both kind of the same. Um, in the sense of trying you can't control them, of course, as their bosses. And you want to try to you can prevent the control effects by bringing in control immunity heroes. Um, you could, let's see. I mean, I could bring in my Acilia for some debuff control. I could bring in the epic version of Catherine for debuff immunity. We could bring in a Vikuk for a cleanser. Ogok for a cleanser. I have lots of options there. Poisons have so many, it's so funny. I haven't built my Vikuk yet this season. But he would definitely help dispelling debuffs or well, we're gonna say, I think I can still smash through this. We'll see. <laughs> Depends on if Garius's shields are enough. Then, of course, the other option is resistance. You don't need that much. So if you just put a resistance chest plus a little bit of substats or use someone's aura, you could do really well with these bosses early on, especially with just a resistance focus and worry less about the actual cleansing or preventing them. Like the other boss, you can't cleanse some stuff, but you can prevent them. This one, you can at least cleanse the poisons. So that level 60 boss, of course, gets me the free epic. Hey! So Galid is kind of like Goom Gum, as I call him. Um, He's a good controller. So I like that the heroes that you get from Fey Meander are also good to use. In progression for Faye Meander. So he brings uh, accuracy penalty here. Man, it's kind of boring. But the stun and knockback on the battle skill. And then of course here, stun and knockback on the ultimate. Triggers toxic blast to the enemy. It's so funny, and dealing. They make it sound like toxic blast is some special move, but it's like, no, it's not. <laughs> it's just a hit. But he also brings an accuracy aura. So if you have to take off accuracy to put on a resistance chest to beat a hard boss or something, or to deal with crazy crowd control from someone you're stuck on in a phase, you could always use his aura. Nice big 50 accuracy to compensate. But yeah, he'll definitely be solid for pumping out some controls. But I, I think I prefer, for my comp, well, it's good that he's a different element, right? He's poison. So for me, like, I'm using Frost and Ice Blast mostly, and that's the Psychic Core that I'm pushing. But if you're pushing Lightning and Poison, there you go. You have a little controller to help out for the rest of the stages. But that was good. I got a bunch of rewards. I'm really glad that I'm not waiting until the end of the season, because this is what I... I need this now, not later. I need this now. <laughs> Yeah, I think when it comes to Faye, I, I, I'm not sure if there's any other really tips I can think of. I'm trying to think of more tips and tricks for Faye Meander. But overall, it's really just crowd control and then dealing with the buffs and control effects from the bosses. And the more you can crowd control, the better. The later you get, the more valuable that crowd control is going to be. You could smash as much as possible early on. But once it gets hard, controlling the enemy is huge. And then, of course, the obvious. Like, you get stuck at something, manual it. Like, use your little... Turn off the ultimate. Choose who you're attacking. As I die. As it gets hard. Like, make sure that Drista Orden is going to attack the right people. Like, this group of people. Okay, sure. Just make sure he's hitting the right people. Kind of stuff like that manually when you need to or timing your th timing stuff if you have Sigrid in your team and you're pushing you kind of want to make sure she's going after there's a bunch of debuffs applied just sometimes you have to go a little bit manual or semi-manual or semi-auto with the ultimates and hold someone back for the right moments just like all the content but 
overall, Fae gets hard. There's some really challenging bosses, but I think the strategies that work th the best have been the people going crazy in all Holy Hunter sets and using heroes that have control, so it's probably the biggest tip of all. And if you haven't already, be sure to download Dragon or Silent Gods now using the link in the description or the pinned comment. It's available on Android, iOS, Mac, PC, Steam, and Epic Games.